Hello gamers, Barmy here with a brand new one button tank guide for the Protection Warrior in Kata Classic. In this video, I'm going to show how anyone can tank with a warrior, from the early game leveling to well into end game content. We're going to go over talents, heirlooms for leveling, gear stats and glyphs, and then we'll move on to the juicy one button macro that makes playing this build so easy. I'm also going to be talking about the add-ons that I use to bring this all together and how to easily manage party threat and aggro. Now it might sound like there's a mountain of information to absorb, but don't worry, all the important sections of the video have been timestamped and everything you need to know is detailed down in the description. Also, all of the macros and weak auras used in this video can be found in my Discord, which is also linked below. Now all you have to do is sit back and relax, and I'll show you how to dominate on your prop warrior in Cataclysm Classic. Okay, the talents then. I'm not going to go over every talent individually, but this is what your completed tree should look like, and I suggest that you read up on each of them to get a better idea of how the class functions. However, later in the video, I'll be talking about these talents in particular, as they are fundamental to making the one button build work. First things first, if you're in the leveling process below level 80, then you're not going to be able to reforge your gear. The best thing to do is equip as many heirlooms as you can, as early as you can. This will greatly increase the survivability and power level of your character, and massively increase your XP per hour. If possible, the heirlooms you want to go for are the Burnished Helm, Pauldrons and Breastplate of Might, the Ripped Sandstorm Cloak, the Blood Soaked Skullforge Reaver, the Swift Hand of Justice Trinket is nice, and if you need to fill a slot, then the Inherited Signia for your race can be equipped. And if you're a fishing enjoyer, then the Dead Pirate Ring is also a nice bonus. There's a link in the description for a site detailing all the heirlooms available to you in Cataclysm, how much they cost, and where you can buy them. Now let's have a look at all the stats important to the Prop Warrior. First up we've got Mastery Rating. Prop Warriors get critical block as their mastery, and each block gives a flat 30% damage reduction. Each point of mastery increases your block chance and your critical block chance by an additional 1.5%, and you want to stack mastery until you reach 102.4% avoidance. Next up is Stamina. Stamina is the best overall defensive stat to stack beyond mastery. Each point of stamina simply provides health, increasing your effective health overall and improving your chance to survive incoming attacks. Stamina is also greatly bolstered by the new Vengeance passive, which converts 5% of damage taken into attack power up to a maximum of 10% of your health. Next up, Parry and Dodge. Between Parry and Dodge, Parry should be prioritised slightly higher due to the Hold the Line talent which increases your crit chance and your critical block chance by 10% for 10 seconds after your parry and attack. That being said, parry and dodge diminish at the same rates, so try not to have a lot more parry than dodge, as that means you're incurring a much heavier diminishing return on parry than you are on dodge. And finally, expertise and hit, which are our lowest priority stats. With defensive stance now buffed to generate 500% additional threat, we have a massive increase to our threat generation, allowing us to pretty much ignore these stats and entirely focus on survivability. And now the glyphs. For the prime glyphs, we go for Glyph of Shield Slam to increase its damage by 10%, Glyph of Revenge to increase its damage by 10%, and Glyph of Devastate to increase its critical strike chance by 5%. For the major glyphs, we have Glyph of Cleaving, to increase the number of cleave hits by one, Glyph of Shockwave to reduce its cooldown by one second, and Glyph of Shield Wall to reduce damage taken by an additional 20% at the cost of the cooldown being increased by two minutes. And for the minor glyphs, we have Glyph of Battle to increase the duration of Battle Shout by two minutes and the area of effect by 50%. Glyph of Berserker Rage to gain five rage when used, and Glyph of Demoralizing Shout to increase the duration of Demoralizing Shout by 15 seconds and the area of effect by 50%. Let's quickly cover the base mechanics of the Prot Warrior rotation, as it's important that you understand what your macros are doing and capitalise on the advantage that they give you, rather than just spamming buttons and hoping for the best. 
To boil it down to brass tacks, warriors generate rage when dealing or receiving damage, and then consume it as a resource to perform abilities. As a tank, most of your rage comes from soaking damage for the group and converting it into damage and threat to maintain aggro. The only stance I'll be using in this guide is defensive stance, as the Bastion of Defense talent reduces the chance to be critically hit by melee by 6% while in defensive stance. I've got a weak aura that'll let me know if I'm not in defensive stance, and it also displays if my shouts and rend are not active during combat. Now let's go over combat now, and I'll explain what we're doing and how the one button macros work. The add-on that makes these macros possible is called GSE Advanced Macro Compiler, an absolutely fantastic add-on. In a nutshell, GSE allows you to cycle through a list of spells until one comes off of cooldown and then it casts it, meaning that you don't have to worry about rotations, cooldowns or procs, you can just spam the button and the macro will do the rest. Let's have a look at the combat then. The first thing that I'm going to do is charge into combat with my GSE Charge Macro. This macro will cast Charge and Battle Shout at the same time when entering combat, and if Charge is on cooldown, then Intercept will be cast instead. Remember, the Warbringer talent allows us to use Charge and Intercept while in combat and in any stance. Now you can duplicate the macro and swap Battle for Command and Shout if needed. Remember, Charge generates 15 Rage and Shout 20, so we'll be entering combat with at least 15 Rage. 35 if Shout is off of cooldown. Straight after the charge, put Rend onto the target, and if you're fighting multiple mobs, immediately Thunderclap, which will spread Rend onto all of the other mobs because of the Blood and Thunder talent. Every subsequent Thunderclap will refresh the Rend duration on all targets, as well as adding a stack of Thunderstruck, which increases the damage of our next Shockwave by 10% per stack. We get this through the Thunderstruck talent, which also boosts our AoE damage by buffing Rend, Cleave and Thunderclap damage by 6%. To make sure Rend doesn't drop off, I use the Plate and Nameplates add-on, which clearly displays all of my debuff timers on the target. Most people who choose to use these one button macros are generally those who want to enjoy all aspects of the game, such as heroics and raids but don't have the time to master their keybinds or the dexterity to successfully press the keys. If that person is you, then I want to introduce you to my best friend in gaming, the Razor Tartarus V2. I've been using this bad boy for years now and it's really helped me to get the most out of my gaming, even though I suffer from stiff and painful joints. The Tartarus will make playing any class in WoW so much easier and you have my personal guarantee that you won't regret it if you get one. Hit the link up here if you want one. There's also a link in the description to a review I did recently that's worth a watch. And now we're ready for the one button macro. For this macro, we're using the GSE add-on again. Now at this point in the game, I've got two used trinkets, so I've put the one with the shortest cooldown into my macro, so I don't have to think about it. The first skill on the list though is Shield Block, which increases our chance to block by 25%. The second skill is Berserker Rage, which is absolutely brilliant for rage generation, especially with the Glyph. Berserker Rage also gives us immunity to movement impairing effects, and as with Shield Block, has a 10 second uptime on a 30 second cooldown. The third skill is Victory Rush. It's only usable after killing an enemy that yields experience or honor. If it procs, we'll pop it, easy. Next up is Devastate. Now Devastate is a powerful melee attack that sunders the target's armor, stacking up to three times. Now as we mentioned earlier, we have the Glyph of Devastate for an extra 5% crit chance, but with the Sword and Board talent, we get another 15% crit chance, as well as a 30% chance to reset the cooldown of Shield Slam and completely remove its rage cost. So of course, Shield Slam is our next ability. With Shield Slam, we get a massive amount of damage on a 6 second cooldown, and that's if Devastate doesn't proc, and it also dispels one magic effect on the target. The Heavy Repercussions talent increases our Shield Slam damage by 100% while Shield Block is active, so you're going to notice significant spikes in damage when all of these cooldowns and procs come together. And finally, we have Revenge, a big damage counteract which is only usable after a block, dodge or parry. 
it only costs 5 rage, and its damage is boosted 10% by the glyph and 60% by the improved revenge talent, which also causes it to strike an extra target. Revenge also has a 30% chance to reset the cooldown of Slam and completely ignore its rage cost. So let's see how it all goes together then. We're going to charge in, rend and then thunderclap. Demo shout and shield wall with the macro if you need the defense and then spam the one button macro. Now I have a weak aura that alerts me when I'm nearing max range, at which point I'll spam my heroic strike macro together with the one button macro if I'm on a single target or my cleave macro together with the one button macro if I'm on multiple targets. As you get stacks of Thunderstruck, unleash Shockwave onto multiple targets for a mass stun and big AoE damage. I also macro Recklessness with a Use Trinket for periods where I want to pump, and if I'm in trouble, I use my Oh Shit macro. The last thing I want to talk about is monitoring threat. The one button macros will go a long way to make sure you have lots of threat, but there'll always be occasions where your party or raid members get some aggro. Now the add-on that I use to monitor overall threat and DPS is details and I locate this at the bottom of my screen and I've made myself two macros for turning the details display on and off. To monitor if party members get aggro I use the add-on shadowed unit frames and activate party border highlighting on aggro which looks like this. I then use the click add-on to set up a mouse over macro for intervene so that I can take care of party members with one click when they get into trouble. I also have one of these for vigilance and a weak aura over my party frames so that I can monitor them easily. And finally, using these macros will cause error dialogue and text whenever it tries to catch the spell that's on cooldown or out of range. I can't do that yet. Not ready yet. That ability isn't ready yet. The dialogue can be turned off in the audio options and you can use this script to disable the red error text if you want a super clean UI. Now I think that's everything and if you implement all of this you'll be absolutely owning on your warrior tank. If I've missed anything or you have any questions at all then please leave a comment or just let me know if you've enjoyed the content. And if you did then smash that like button and make sure that you subscribed as this means the world to me and it really helps the channel to grow. With that said, I hope you're enjoying your time in Azeroth, and I'll see you in the next one.